everyone, and welcome to Discovery Lab Online. We're doing the class live now with Rebecca Reed, the museum's outreach manager. And I can't wait for you to see her program called Urban Wildlife. I'll turn it over to Rebecca. Hi, guys. Um, I'm so glad you all could join us today. I just want to remind everyone to put any questions you might have or if you want to share a story about urban wildlife you see in your yard and maybe where you're from too, that way we can kind of get an idea of you know, where people are watching from and maybe see if there's differences in what we're, we're seeing. Um, you can put those in the live chat comments too. We'd love to hear all of those things. Um, we'll try to answer your questions at the end if we have time and if we don't, we'll make sure that we put those answers in the comments later. Okay, so we're gonna zoom out a little bit. So the first animal we're gonna talk about today, I am sure lots of you are familiar with. This is a raccoon. Um, and you can see raccoons, they can be gray, um, they have the black and the brown. Um, they can also be brown. You can see this one's kind of more of a brown kind of coloration. And some of the things that are kind of telling of a raccoon, you can see they have the dark color around their eyes on their face. And then they also have all the great stripes on their tails. And those are two things that really stand out when you look at the raccoon. Now raccoons, they've really adapted well to living with us in our urban environments um, to the point where some people actually refer to them as trash pandas. They like to live in wooded areas where there's a usually creek or pond or water nearby and they eat lots of things. They'll eat um, your garbage, obviously. Um, you'll see if you live some places, you'll have to um, just kind of get raccoon proof garbage cans where they have special lids or something to keep them from getting in. They also eat crayfish, berries, fruits, fish, they're, um, they're kind of versatile omnivores. They eat a lot of different things. They do a lot of different stuff. Um, I know that if you go camping, you may see them. Um, and you'll probably see them mostly in night because they are nocturnal. You will not see them usually during the day. Something else that's important kind of to know about them is they are one of the animals that can carry rabies. And so if you do see them at a weird time of day or if you see them looking, um, doing odd things, you may want to take note of that and report that to the appropriate people. So um, that's kind of the, our special stuff about our friend the raccoon. So now we're going to move on to our next animal. And our next animal is one that maybe you guys haven't seen before. This is a barred owl and you can tell um, how he gets his name. I'm turning him around so you can see a little bit better. You can see all those lines on his feathers, those bars. And those are kind of the way he got, gets his name. They are a great camouflage. It makes it so he, they're hard to see in the trees. They also like to live in wooded areas. Um, and they also like to be near streams and ponds. Now, they are a bird of prey. And if you look at birds of prey, there's a few things you'll notice. And the big thing you'll notice is their talons. And that's what we call the, their feet. And you can see these talons. They're very sharp, um, very pointy. Let's see if I can. Oh, there we go. That's going to be awesome. You can see they're. They um, use those, they'll fly, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And they are able to um, grab their prey with those talons, and they're able to kind of get into it and hold it tight so they don't drop it. They don't want to waste all of their time catching things and then not getting them. Um, and so that's the very interesting part about that. You can also look up at their beak. Their beak, can we do that? Mm -hmm. Excellent. They're, oh, whoops. And the wrong thing, I hate it. There's a preview of what's happening oh, next. Hooray! Really <laughs> Hooray! <I know. laughs> so crazy town. So um, you can see its beak, and I'll see if I turn it a little bit side. There you go, yeah, you can see its beak is also very sharp. And while owls don't do, they can tear up their prey, they typically will eat their, their prey in large chunks or in whole pieces. And I'm sure lots of you have heard about these. Owls, when they, they eat it all, but they can't digest it all. So they are not able to digest the bones or the fur, if it's something that has fur. And so they'll regurgitate that up and they'll call them owl pellets. And those owl pellets, um, you can find them. Lots of times it's a sign of where owls are, are spending their days when they're sleeping. But you can also order them online and they're really cool. They're not, they're not too big. Maybe they range in size about that big usually. Maybe if you get an extra large one about that big. And you can um, pick them apart and you can see what an owl's eating. So you can find the little jaw bones and the skulls and all the different bones and all the fur. That part's kind of gross. And you are able to kind of see what those owls are eating. Um, some people who study owls use that as a way to track what owls are eating. And owls eat, I'm sure some of you know, they eat a lot of mice, small rodents, rats, squirrels. They'll also eat lizards and snakes on occasion. Um, they'll also eat small, smaller birds. And so 
That's our friend, the barred owl. I'll trade you. Okay, and then our next bird, we have another bird. And this one, I bet you people aren't as familiar with, um, at least not up close. This is a turkey buzzard. And one of the ways you can kind of identify those is they have beautiful brown feathers, but they also have these heads that really don't have feathers on them. They're naked. And the reason that is, is um, this bird is a scavenger. And so it eats rotting like flesh, things that are already dead. They clean up the environment. They help keep things cleaner. And a way that they help keep themselves cleaner is that they make sure that without having all those feathers, when they're eating and if stuff gets on them, it just dries off and flakes off. It doesn't get stuck in their feathers, which can lead to infections and disease and stuff. So that's a, an adaptation they have to um, help kind of keep themselves healthier. They also, if you see, they have a nice beak here that's a longer, I'm going to kind of move because uh, there we go. You can see it better against the blue background than my black sweater. And um, it's a sharper beak. They can rip apart their prey, that, or not their prey, their food that they eat. They don't hunt. Um, and so you may have seen these sometimes on the side of the road. They eat roadkill in our urban environments a lot. Um, sometimes if you live near somewhere somewhere where they um, dispose of like roadkill, if you live near like the park or the street department, you'll see that they'll, they'll, there'll be a lot of them there. And they um, you'll see them sometimes circling in the air. And sometimes they're circling the air because they're looking for smells. They can smell um, food up to two miles away, which is quite far. They're one of the only kinds of birds that have a sense of smell. Um, and when they're smelling, they're up in the air. And also sometimes it's called kettling, where they're just riding the wind currents and just kind of enjoying their day. So they can be doing one or the other. Um, it's not always um, circling around something that they're going to go and eat, um, though that can be the case. And so um, this is one that's a little bit more unusual. And um, it's adapted well to living with us with all of our our traffic and our cars and everything. And now the last animal we have is a special treat for you guys. Okay, let me get him cropped up a little bit so you can see him a little bit better. So let's try turning him around the other direction, see if we can see his face. Oh, can I move your face? Let's see. So this is Puff. And Puff is in from the museum's live animal collection. And he is an opossum. And you'll notice I say opossum, not possum. Possums are actually an animal that lives in Australia. Um, and they are not these. These are opossums. Op opossums, they're marsupials, and they live in the United States. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen them. They're very, um, actually a very interesting animal. They um, like to eat, ah, uh, what do you like? They like to eat vet or, uh, insects and different things. They're also, um, we'll eat some, some so ticks. They're great at eating ticks. And so they're, we like having them in our environment. A lot of people kind of are um, nervous about them. They think that they carry rabies. But interestingly, their body temperature is lower than the um, temperature that the rabies virus likes to live. And so they really don't typically carry rabies um, once in a blue moon. Um, some of the cool things that they do, their defense um, when they get scared is they play possum. And so um, some people don't realize that's a real thing, but they literally are able to stop breathing, lay down on the ground, and um, look dead. And most predators don't want to eat something that's already dead. And so consequently, that's a great ad adaptation that lets them um, kind of not get hurt very often. Now we have a taxidermied um, opossum here too that I want to show you guys because I want to show you the tail. So we're going to kind of move Puff over here to the side um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the parts of the opossum so that you guys can see that. So the first one I'm going to kind of actually I'll hold him a little bit for this part. You can see right here the opossum has a very long tail and what's interesting about their tail it's prehensile so it can grab things. Um, so you'll see it wrap around stuff and it, it's actually pretty strong. And then um, you can also, you can't see it on here, but I'm going to talk about this. So I said earlier that opossums are a marsupial, and that means that they have a pouch, just like a kangaroo. And I'm sure lots of you are familiar with kangaroos and how they have their babies, their joeys in their pouch. Opossums, they do the same thing, only they usually have a number of, of babies. And so the babies will be in their pouch until they're older. And then sometimes they'll ride on the back until they even get a little older, and then they'll go off on their own. Now, possums are most active at dawn and dusk, so consequently, Puff is kind of taking a little snooze for a while, 
once it gets to be nighttime, evening, he'll probably be more active again. Um, he doesn't know that it's his moment of fame right here. And um, so if we have any time for questions, do we have any questions or anything? Because now we could do some of sure. those. So great. I am so excited because there's some really great comments and questions here, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. So um, can owls digest the bones of the things they eat? Talking about the owl again and the owl pellets. Yeah. So no, owls can't digest the bones. It's kind of funny that that's the way they eat and that they aren't able to eat all their food. So they... They eat the whole, the thing whole, the mouse, the rat, or whatever, and then they'll regurgitate up the, the bones and the fur, and that's what makes up that little owl pellet. And so it's not the whole skeleton. When you get that pellet, it's kind of like all compressed together. Some of the bones are broken, and it's all, um, and it's, you know, it's not like you're getting a, a skeleton that's all pretty. You, if you pick it apart, sometimes you can put back that skeleton, but it's, it's, um, it's not quite the same. But no, they're not able to digest those bones. And before we move on to the next question, for those of you uh, that are interested, next week we'll be doing a program called Adaptation Exploration Owls, and LaShawn Spotted Bear will be dissecting an owl pellet so everyone can see what's inside. Oh, that, see, that'll be perfect. Then you can really get a good view of what that looks like. Abigail was wondering, uh, could you talk again about why there are not, there's not fur on the top or feathers on the top of its head? Yeah, let's grab the turkey vulture again. We'll put it out here so we and can Abby, see it. Abby, let me it. know if I did that question correctly. So we'll pull the turkey vulture back up. Okay, so turkey vultures, like I said, they eat rotting flesh, rotting food. And so I'm sure lots of you realize that's not necessarily the cleanest, most bacteria-free kind of situation. And so one of their adaptations is without, they don't have those feathers so that they don't get their feathers all gunked up with all of that um, food. They're not the neatest eaters. And so when they get it on top of their head, it doesn't get stuck there. It'll dry off, it'll flake off instead of, getting stuck in their feathers for a long time and helping lead to like infections and different things like that. Wonderful. Another question that popped up, thinking about the raccoon, why do raccoons eat trash? Well, it's because basically they've adapted themselves to, to our environment and they figured out that we have good food. It's not necessarily the best food for them, the healthiest food for them, but it's convenient and it's easy for them to get to. Wonderful. We have a couple questions from and comments from Betty. Betty was first wondering, thinking about the opossum, why, do our, why are opossums active at night? Well, um, like I said, they're active more at night and also at dawn. They're, those are their, their favorite times, dusk and dawn. And that's just, oh, yeah, predators. My friend in the sidelines is just feeding me answers. Yeah, so the um, that's when their predators aren't as able to find them. There's fewer predators out, and it's just a safer time for them to be out and doing their going about their day. Wonderful. And Betty said she remembers dissecting an owl pellet in museum school years ago. I love that. And there must be barred owls in Fort Worth. Thanks so much, Betty. Next question, where do opossums live? And that's from Abby. So opossums live um, in trees. They like wooded areas. Really all of our animals that we've talked about today, like wooded areas, they need sources of water and things. Um, so the opossum, Usually in a tree, sometimes um, they'll come up with like an alternative housing situation if they find something that kind of mimics a tree cavity. But a tree is their favorite. One person added, asked a comment, and I love this idea, is they brought a possum, a dog brought a possum in the house that was playing dead. Could you talk a little bit about, we often talk about opossums playing dead. How is that an adaptation or a protection? Yes. Yeah, so opossums, um, when they're very scared, and it, it's not even something they can control. It just happens. They basically, they stop breathing. They, they pass out. They become limp. And they look like they're dead. Um, in fact, some people think that they're dead. Um, that's how convincing it is. It, it really is very, very convincing. And so those opossums in their, their kind of playing opossum, playing opossum state, um, they just lay there. And predators, typically, they don't want to eat something that's already dead because that means it might be our friend here, the scavenger, he'll do that. But predators don't want to. They want something that's fresh, that's bacteria-free, that they know is going to be healthy for them, safe for them to eat. And so if the opossum's already dead, they get concerned that it might be sick, it might have something. And so their instincts tell them not to eat it, to leave it alone. And so it's a great way for that opossum to kind of trick predators into thinking, that it's not something that's good for it to eat, when in reality, it probably is just fine. Great. Zane, who's nine years old, wanted to know, why do vultures feed on roadkill? 
that is just their um, ecological niche in our in our world. That's what they do. We have um, some things that are decomposers like snails and earthworms and pill bugs. And you might be familiar with those. They're another cleanup crew we have. But then we also have the scavengers, which are cleanup crews. And those are really important um, animals in the world because they're the ones who keep all of the kind of debris and um, routing things and dead things from kind of piling up and overtaking everything. They're what keeps the world kind of clean and pleasant and, and so we're able to use it. Great. Do we have anything else? Those are all our questions for today. Great. Well, thank you so much. So you guys, thank you so much for taking part in Discovery Lab Online. Rebecca and her team, thanks so much for doing this program. Rebecca's team will be back next week with additional programs as well. So join us each day where we're doing live programs, and then you can visit the, uh, our, our recordings on our YouTube channel. So check those out. Educators will be adding the text connections to the different programs that we do, and we welcome you to send those on to your students. And please let us know if there's anything we can do to support you and you your families while you are at home. That is our role in the community and we are so excited to do that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.